when it comes to consular cases, uh, and you know, speaking as Canadian foreign ministers, particularly of Canadians detained abroad, uh, what we have first and foremost in mind is that these are people. Um, these are our compatriots, and we have a tremendously important duty of care that we take really seriously. Uh, we've been in touch with uh, Mr. Kovrig's family, and we have raised the issue with the Chinese authorities. Uh, when it comes to the case of, as we do always, and you know, we, I want to say, you know, especially if his family members are hearing us tonight, uh, this has our attention at the very highest levels of our government. We're very, very focused on it uh, and you know, know that we are concerned. Um, when it comes to the case of Ms. Meng, uh, I think it's really important to be clear that Canada is a rule of law country and Canada is a country that believes in abiding by its treaty obligations. Uh, in the case of Ms. Meng, uh, all due process, all Canadian due process has been followed to this point. Uh, this is a situation where there has been no political interference at all. Uh, this has been purely a case of abiding by treaty obligations. Uh, at this point, as you mentioned, Mark, uh, her case is before the courts. Uh, we have been very clear with China that uh, she has been convicted of breaking no laws. Uh, she absolutely uh, ought to have full, Chinese officials have full consular access to her. We need to treat her in a respectful way, and that is what we are seeking to do. And at this stage, the case is before the courts and will be handled, is being handled by Canadian judges in accordance with the law. And that's how it has to be. And, you know, I am sure everyone appreciates here, and I certainly appreciate also uh, the geopolitical complexity potentially radiating from all of this. Um, but being a rule of law country is core to who we are as a country. And being a rule of law country, you can't, you know, it's not like going to a buffet. You can't sort of say, I follow rule of law for these two dishes because I really like them, but this one I don't like so much, so we're not going to be rule of law in this matter. Uh, I, at this point, the case is before Canadian judges. Um, I've spot in the audience Tom Heinzman, one of Canada's most distinguished lawyers. Uh, and I think Tom, he really is. Um, and I think Tom will agree with me that our independent legal system is one of the finest, if not the finest, in the world. I trust it. Canadians should trust it. And our partners around the world should trust it, too. Uh, Ms. Friedman, you said you're concerned, obviously, about Michael Kovrig, and you're in touch with the, Canadian, uh, the Chinese uh, government about his case. But you didn't say whether or not you think it's related. Are these two things related? That's right that I didn't say that. Yes. Um, we know this. <laughs> have, you, have you had any indications from the Chinese government that they're related? We are treating Mr. Kovrig's case really seriously. Um, he is a Canadian who has been detained, and we're very focused on it. We've raised it with the Chinese authorities, and we're in touch with his family. What other pressure has the Chinese government tried to uh, put on Canada since uh, Ms. Meng's arrest? They called your ambassador in. Uh, there's obviously there's a lot of trade between Canada and China. It's a big, big, important thing to, to Canada. What, what, what are the p potential uh, ramifications of this? You know, I think, Peter, that's really a question for China. Um, what is important for us uh, to communicate to China and also to Canadians uh, is what I've just said, that 
this case, uh, the detention of Ms. Meng, is not a political judgment by Canada. This is about Canada abiding by an extradition treaty with no political interference at all. Um, Are you told about this would, arrest before it happens, or does it happen automatically without your knowledge? The Prime Minister has said that he was informed that it would happen. Um, and in accordance with our processes, there was no interference. We, we believe very strongly in following our treaty commitments and in not interfering politically. Um, you can, there's a real slippery slope there that you can slide down incredibly quickly. And you know, both Mark and Merrick referred at the beginning to this being a pretty complicated time in the world. We're seeing a lot of countries around the world that are starting to play fast and loose with democratic institutions and with rule of law. Uh, Canada is not going to be one of those countries. And it's not always so easy to be a rule of law country. But in the fullness of time, we're always going to be glad that we stick to that. And I just want to say, well, yeah, let's, we agree with that, right? And I'm going to say just one more thing to Peter's question. Um, it's important for us, and, and we're working on this, um, to be sure that this reality of what has happened is fully explained by us to China. Uh, and I do want to take this opportunity to say that Canada's relationship with China is important. It's a relationship that we value. Uh, it's a relationship that can and will and must continue.